I was thinking today or the other day when I was kind of, you know, marinating on digesting and sort of meditating on everything that happened with Tremaine Emery at Supreme, having to step down because he felt like, you know, the company was, um, or the brand was systemically racist and they weren't allowing him to, you know, to, to put his ideas out there um, unfiltered and, you know, without constraints. I was thinking to myself, should there be such a thing as DJ affirmative action? Should there be such a thing as DJ affirmative action? Where you specifically have these clubs in London or in the UK or in the world, right? That little bit of a close shop that don't really welcome people in unless you have a big record or you're a big DJ and stuff, whatever. It's pretty difficult, right? I always say it before. I think DJing is maybe one of the hardest occupations to make it in because there's no one clear path. And for whatever reason, DJs are also very... Um, it's a very cl it's a kind of a very closed clicky kind of industry once you're in i'm sure everybody opens up but on the outside they don't really bring people in there's not a lot of djs kind of you know mentoring up and coming djs and bringing them in um unless you're obviously signed to a record label there's not a lot of agencies taking chances on people that are unknown it's all a lot of like you have to kind of just build your own clout build your own kind of name build your own rep and then hope that someone recognizes you or then go and pitch people to represent you or to put you on and stuff it's a lot of kind of like you having to do the, a lot of the grunt work to kind of get yourself out there it doesn't exist the opportunity to kind of maybe you know maybe in the past where you could go and do dj residencies and sort of like learn in real time in a club how to play in front of a certain audience or just play in front of any audience then maybe those chances opportunity gives you opportunity to play in front of certain people those people sign you now nah, there is none of that. DJ, DJ res residencies, for the most part, don't really exist. Um, most nightclubs have, you know, external promoters coming in and putting on their events, or they host some of the biggest DJs to come and play, and then they maybe have some middle DJs to come and support them. But there is no, you know, fucking residency programs that allow people that are unknown from bedrooms to go from bedrooms to clubs. So, with that being said, it's even harder for people who come from minority communities like i do <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna be a tremaine from for minorities like myself right for minorities like myself for immigrants like myself for refugees like myself for displaced disadvantaged <laughs> poverty stricken people like myself it's even harder to get in right because you know I come from a certain place. I've grown up a certain way. That idea of like sucking people off and breading them to get opportunities, it's never going to happen. I'm never going to email <clears throat> anybody to ask for DJ sets or to ask for gigs. It's just not something that I'm ever going to do. I'm never going to try and befriend a club owner to be his friend so that they can give... Like, it's never going to happen. I'm never going to be that guy. And that's probably going to be one of the stumbling blocks that I'm always going to face. But I would hope there's opportunity that I have the chance to kind of just like, you know just show how good i am and then people recognize that and it goes from there but doing what other people do that's that actually works where you go and meet people and you connect and you network and you do the whole shaking hand things and air yeah, you pretend that you're happy to see them nah I can't, I can't do that so i can't do that but there is a need for more representation out there in the dj world let's be honest right there's a lot of you know the same old same old out there you don't see a lot of me behind the DJ booth playing some of these sort of tunes that you hear from these other people playing, right? I'm not going to get there and play Afro beats, right? I'm going to be playing techno and stuff, so don't worry. But I wonder if a way to get in is to do DJ affirmative action. And I wonder if what I should do is maybe do a Tremaine. Maybe do a Tremaine with Fold, right? My favourite club in the world, or my favourite club in the UK. A club that I've been to since the very first time it opened, right? I went to the first flipping party at this place. I think 2018, one of the first raves in there. I raved about it. I spoke about it in the pod. I flipping preached about it to everybody that I fucking met. Anybody that asks me, hey, what club to go to? I say, Fold, 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 Fold. I fucking love that place. I've been to that place too much to the point where i'm fucking bored of going there now i don't want to go there anymore because i go there too often i want to kind of adventure out to new places but 
I'd also like to play there one day. It's a fucking fantastic club. It's got a great crowd. But then I thought to myself, you know what? Instead of doing the grunt work and working hard behind the scenes and going to meet all these new people during the unfolds and actually trying to be a part of the community, not just going in there and going home. Nah, I don't want to do all that hard work. I don't want to break my back. I don't want to make myself feel uncomfortable. So I'm just going to wave the race flag. I'm going to play the race card. And I'm going to say, maybe we should start introducing DJ Affirmative Action so people like myself can play at these techno clubs in London that don't have enough black and minority DJs, especially guys. Because there's a lot of people out there doing these, you know, representation for others, but there's not a lot of representation for minority guys in the techno scene. You don't see it. Don't lie. You don't see it. So maybe I'm going to start waving the race flag and saying I'm black and I'm proud, right? Let me in. Let me in. Because I just checked the Fold website, actually, right? <laughs> and their resident DJs are hella white. <laughs> so I wonder. I wonder if I kicked up a fuss about this, right? If, I actually, if this actually did annoy me and I started to do the whole race thing. Oh, I'm black and I deserve stuff. Give me stuff, right? I wonder <laughs> if it would actually work. If they'd, be like, if they'd make some big statement, <laughs> right? And they'd be like, yeah, we are sorry for the effects that we've had on the black community. We're going to do better to kind of make this right. In an effort to make it right, we're going to give this Agostino guy that we don't know, we've never heard play, <laughs> right? We, like, we're going to give him the reins to have a six-month residency hour club. <laughs> I wonder if I could do it. Because essentially, Tremaine got that job at Supreme. Like, think about this now. Think about this, right? Tremaine got that job at Supreme partly because he's black. Let's, not, let's call a spade a spade. He partly got that job because he's black. Obviously, he's got his own brand. Then until the sick, he's obviously a super popular guy, well connected. He's known all the people behind the scenes from way back. I know it's, his history is deep, but part of the reason why he got that job because he ticked a box, right? Black got the dreads, has that kind of boho homeless look going on. Um, wears all the cool brands. Right? It's friends with certain people, blah, 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 Virgil's mate, blah, 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 right? That's why part of the reason why he got that job. So I wonder if I just start waving the fucking black flag and start saying, I'm black and I'm proud, give me things, I need things, I'm hungry, please fold DJ bookings. <laughs> because everybody you got on here who's a resident DJ at one of the most, and again, this is a funny point to make. Fold is one of the most popular clubs in London. Maybe one of the most popular clubs in the UK now, in that short space of time. Because for whatever reason, before them, no one ever decided to, to think, hey, why don't I take the good parts of all these other clubs around Europe and try and replicate them in Fold? Because earlier on when Fold started, they were very Bergheim-ish. They were trying too hard to be Bergheim. Then they found their way. But essentially what they did was take all the good parts, all the good experiences they've had from all these other clubs they've gone to, especially in Europe, and try to replicate it in a London club. No one's ever tried that. We just do things our way and that's it. But no one tried to do a club in London where you put stickers on the phone, no pictures. No one tried to do a club in London where you maybe have forward thinking bookings. You maybe take a chance on promoters. You might have an unfold night where it's like from 12 to 12 where you have like friends and family playing. No, li no, no lineups being announced. Um, where you have studios like, inside the same building and stuff, like where you have like all night, you know, 18 hour flipping raves happening because it's in a part of London where there's not a lot of restrictions and the licensing laws are a bit more lax than other parts of London. No one tried to do that. So they did it and they smashed it and everyone fucking loves it. But it's also the most popular club in London. It has all types of people go there. You look at, you look at the dance floor and it's like, it's like fucking the United Cars of Benetton. But for some reason... The resident DJs, right? The resident DJs at this club are all very Caucasian looking. I'm sure some of these people are going to say, I'm not white, I'm from Israel. I'm not white, I'm from Georgia. I'm not white, I'm Romanian. I know, right? But they're all, you know, they're not my, they're not my skin tone, right? That's kind of funny. I just find that funny just in terms of an observation. Now, 
should I take that a level further and start campaigning? <laughs> should I walk up to the fucking fold on a Friday with my fucking new rock boots and my short shorts, right? And my little jock strap on with a sign that says <laughs> black, D what's that? No, what's that? Uh, black DJ bookings needed or something. Maybe that's what I should do going forward. Maybe the way to go forward actually is affirmative action. But to be real, there has to be a level of shame about that sort of stuff, innit? Because I know I would. I would feel a little bit of shame. But I think in life, what I've realised over the years, part of being successful is not having any shame. It's kind of like a sociopath thing. If you have the ability to not be embarrassed and not feel shame, you will get so far in life. Because think of this. To actually be a part of that DJ, resident DJ roster at Fold, what do you actually have to do? If you really want to be a part of it and not wave the race flag, what do you have to do there? Just be a part of the community. What does being a part of the community entail? Going to loads of events, you know, meeting people that, that play there, meeting people that go there, adding them on Instagram, swapping numbers, dancing with them, hanging out with them, maybe going to their own events, maybe booking them at your events. Maybe introduce yourself to, introducing yourself to the owners. Whatever it may be. All those things is what would actually get you into that crew. But all of that stuff requires you to put your ego, pride, shape, whatever all that thing in, your, in you, you have to put it to one side because you're going to have some odd experiences here and there. Not all your interactions are going to go well. Some interactions, some people just might not like you. Some of them, the vibe might be off. Some of them, you might catch them at a wrong time. Some of them, you might do something wrong. Whatever. They're going to be weird interactions. So you're going to have to just to kind of be able to just suck them all up and go again. So that's actually the real trick of it. The real trick of this stuff, especially in this kind of creative space where there is no like, you know, one way to go from top to bottom. You just have to have no shame, no sense of embarrassment. And you really, really have to want it. Because when you really want it, really, you're gonna you're gonna make all those adjustments because it's not big of it. They're not that, that big of a deal. Think about it. It's not that big of a deal. You have to introduce yourself. You have to say hi. You have to shake some hands, kiss some babies, and shit. It's not that big of a deal. But at this stage of my life, I'm just not willing to do that. I'm not willing to like pretend I'm happy to see you when I'm not. Oh, I feel like if I don't actually care. Try and like make small talk and shit. It already went bad for me the other day when I went to Adonis. I tried to fucking do the whole ha ha he he. It didn't work, right? It, it, I landed like a fucking lead balloon out there. It fucking feels awful to be in a place where, you know, you're surrounded by people that are just raving and having a good time, but then they're also kind of like letting you know, nah, we're not feeling you. You're, you're kind of lame. You're not as cool enough as, as we are. And you're like, hold on. We're just, this is just a party. Why do you have, why do you feel a level of superiority to me when we're just both stomping around the same fucking concrete? It's kind of a weird, it's kind of puzzling, but it kind of is what it is. So that's the actual key of it. The actual key to actual making it in any creative space is just to put aside whatever pride, whatever ego you have, whatever entitlement, and actually integrate yourself in that community. Actually make an effort to make some friends. Or if not, maybe create your own little crew of things. But that whole affirmative action thing and wanting to get in with your race, to get through the door... I think is the most grossest, um, lamest, corniest, um, low vibrations thing you could ever do. Because I do understand the idea around just get your foot in the door, but I would be so ashamed. I'd be so embarrassed. And, you know, the opposite of proud, if I got in that way, it, it wouldn't sit right. You know, if, you got, if that's the way you got in. If you got in because you guilt tripped, right or you emotionally or in this case racially blackmailed <laughs> the owners right <laughs> into giving you a spot it wouldn't sit right it wouldn't sit right it rich wouldn't you'd be like you didn't earn this you just did, did it because they felt sorry for you because you happen to be born the color that you are you didn't choose to be born this race here you are now taking advantage of the plight of people that you don't even know you've not experienced anything that they experienced and now you're taking their trauma and you're using it as a fucking Trojan horse to get fucking DJ bookings. Do you know how lame that is? 
to get a job working at a streetwear company. Do you know how lame that is? That's what I thought when I was thinking about the Tremaine Emery thing. Imagine you use your race to get the job and then you use your race to kind of, you know, what's that word called? To kind of moral grandstand on the people that gave you the job and then they tell you to fuck off. Imagine how embarrassing that is. They give you the job because of your race. They kind of indulge you because of it. Instead of using it as opportunity to kind of, you know, because that's why I think the train thing is really sad because he kind of just looked out for himself. He went in there because of his race, because he's cool. But if you go in there and you think it's too white, then go and hire new people to come in and make it a little bit more, you know, make it a little bit more wagwan, whatever you want to make it. Yeah, you know I mean, do your thing. But instead, he looked. He was looking out for his own self. He wanted to get his own ideas out there and get all the credit. And in the process, you know, creative differences and that opportunity to try and bring in new people completely went. So for me, as tempting as it is to wave the affirmative action flag and to campaign and protest outside a fold and say, I deserve a set. I deserve a book in here because I'm black. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't be afraid. I'm not going to start campaigning. I'm not going to say fold. So I'm not going to say hashtag fold. So white on, <laughs> on Instagram or anything. All right. I'm, I'm just going to, it's just an observation. The resident DJs are kind of Caucasian. It is what it is. But if you want to get into this crew, it's not difficult. You know, like you just, you just make an effort. You put out things, you try and become friends with people and they'll probably let you in. But the whole waving of the affirmative action flag, I'm black, I'm black, give me job, I'm black, I'm black, give me job, give me job. And then you get in there and you're fucking shit anyway. What's the fucking point? Then you, that's, that's the thing people don't talk about. You get in there because you're black, which is cool. But then if you're shit, you're ruining it for everybody else that's black behind you. That's the fucked up thing. Everybody black, brown and fucking Asian, you fucking ruin it for all them behind you. So it's actually a lot of responsibility when you take a job under the flag of, I'm the BLM creative officer of this company. It actually takes, that's actually way more pressure than you need. You should actually come in there with only the pressure of your own talent, the pressure of how you do things. And then if you fail, cool. You didn't like the kid. You know, if I'm known for fucking florals and I go in there and I try and slap all my fucking floral all over prints everywhere, what they do, and then they don't like it, cool. I, I can just say they're not feeling my florals. But I can't go in there, you know, with the whole black and I'm proud thing and I try and do a top boy t shirt and shit. It doesn't land. <laughs> and I've got nothing else. You know what I mean? Nah, man. I can't, I can't do that, man. I can't do that to myself. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, sl I wouldn't sleep well at night. As tempting as it is, because I'm sure it would work. I'm sure it would. But I can't do that fold thing. I love I loved the club too much to like do that to them, to be fair. They provided me with so many good nights. Um, so many fucking memorable DJ sets. I think of DVS1 I saw there. I think of fucking um, Richie Horton I saw there. I think of D-Dan I saw there. I think of, you know, Freddie K. All these amazing people I've seen play at fucking fold. They gave me so many great nights. I can't ever... You know, then now to turn around and try and do affirmative action on them and get them cancelled <laughs> because they won't book me for a fucking set. That would be so heinous, man. Um, but yeah, <laughs> just imagine. Oh, would fucking love it. It'd be so funny. Oh my god, imagine fold so white. <laughs> that would be so funny, man. Imagine fold so white. I just rock up there, like you know. <laughs> with my headphones in my jd bag ah oh, right on right on brand but anyway what can i do man let's move on man i don't want to i don't want to cause anyone any problems you know what i mean no problems be causing over here so 